Okay, so in this video, we're going to look at implementing a day-night cycle. To do that, we need to do two things. One, we're going to have to create a timer that, based on certain periods of time, the directional light will have some of its attributes changed. So right now, directional light is effectively working like the sun. So let's go ahead and rename that. Click on it, change it to sun. And over here, you're going to see intensity. As intensity gets lower or higher, the brightness will get lower, it'll get darker, or as it goes higher, it'll get brighter. And we have to do that on a timer. So basically, there will be a couple aspects to the timer. One is the transition, because presumably you're going to want a certain amount of brightness and a certain amount of darkness for an extended period of time, but then you want this transition. So depending how quickly or slowly you want the transition. So you're going to have a couple timers. One is the overall day, one for the overall night, and then one that controls those transitions. So that's one thing that we have to do. The second thing that we have to do is our 2D objects actually do not have any shadows on them. They do not receive light. So even if you change the brightness, they will not change. So let's do a quick demonstration. So I've got the sun selected. Watch the rock. If I change intensity down to zero, this got darker, this got darker. Our 2D objects did not. Now you could say, well, well there's a light above them, but that's not why. In this case, it's because they're not ex receiving the light at all. So let's change that back to one. So what do we have to do? Well, the problem is the material. Because when you create a sprite, it has this default sprites material. So we actually want to create a different material. So let's start with that. We're going to right click, create material, and we'll call this sprite mat. Now for sprite mat, we're going to come up to shader, go to sprites, just as we saw that it's currently using, but rather than default, we're going to use diffuse. Now when we put this on this, it's going to change a little bit, and that's because it's going to suddenly start receiving light. So watch what happens. We click on rock, we click sprite map, uh, sprite mat, excuse me. See how it got brighter? Because now it is receiving light. So keep that in mind when you're determining what the base color of this should be. So now it's receiving light. If you want to confirm that, go back to our sun. And let's go ahead and change intensity again. See, now it is getting darker. Now let's give it a quick run. So like I said, it's not pitch black, but you definitely made things a lot darker. We'll set that back to one. So it's probably better to make your sprite map matte early on rather than having hundreds and hundreds of objects that you then have to go back and add the sprite mat to each and every one of them. So we have our sprite mat and now our 2D objects now receive light or at least the rock does. I suppose if you want you could go ahead and add it to Abigail. Makes her kind of washed out. And you get added to this, but the problem is with this, let's see. Okay, the campfire flame, we we don't want to apply it to because the campfire is meant to be a source of light. So you could add it to the wood, but not the fire itself. So now let's go ahead and go back to the sun and change this again. So these are really weak, but you can see it is indeed shining on them. We'd probably have to want to reposition it a little bit. Like this one doesn't look like it's quite over her head. Let's see how it looks when we're running it, though. Yeah, we'd want to probably reposition that. So we could take that, move it back, run it. There. So not perfect. Certainly you need to tweak the lights a little bit, but you're getting closer. But now you can make things dark. You can give a night cycle. So what do we want to do now? What we want to do is we now need to change the sun over time. So let's set that back to one. So 
So in short, what we need is a script that has a delay of a certain amount of time. That way you have whatever duration you want the day to, the, to last. And then there'll be a transition period where the intensity changes over a certain amount of time. Relatively short, unless you want to have a very realistic day-night cycle. Otherwise, you'd have this change relatively quickly. So the intensity would have to change several times until you reach either the zero or the one. And then you kind of rinse and repeat. You basically then have another uh, period of time where it doesn't change, followed by another transition in the opposite direction. So how do we do that? Let's create a new script. And we'll call this day night. We'll take sun. We'll put day night on it. And like I said, we're going to use get component to modify this variable based on time or elapsed time. So what do we want to do? Well, we need a variable, therefore, for our intensity. So public, public, and it's a float, and we'll call it intensity LVL, short for level, and it starts off as 1. Let's get rid of this remark statement. Let's get rid of this remark statement. And inside the update section, with every frame, the intensity will be checked, the intensity level. Or should I say not so much checked so much as reapplied. So get component light in intensity. And it'll be is set to in intensity level. And I just want to point out this is one of those cases where get component really does mirror the inspector. So sun is selected, and you chose sun, then you chose light, then you chose intensity. Now what we want to do is we need to have two cycles where it stays either zero or one for an extended period of time, and then there's a short transition in between where it goes from zero back to one and one back to zero. So what we want to do, therefore, is use, one of the ways to do this is use IEnumerator and basically create these delays. So we're going to do this in an iterative process. So we're going to type out a few things that we're then basically going to undo or at least modify. So... Let's create IE numerator. So outside of start, outside of update, IE numerator. We'll call this start night cycle. Yield return new wait four seconds. And for the moment, we'll just put in five. Don't worry about the individual meaning of these. The overall takeaway is that five seconds will pass, and then whatever is after this will be executed. So another way to say is whatever follows will not be executed until after the five seconds. The application will continue to run normally. It won't pause, but whatever's here will not be run. So for the moment, like I said, we're going to set the intensity level immediately to the other value. And then when we do that, we'll do that to show you that it's working, but then we'll add the transitions. So we need to change that variable. So intensity level will get set to zero. And then we'll create a new routine. I enumerator start day cycle. Very similar. 
It's going to wait five seconds, and then it'll change it to one. And then what we need to do is we need these to keep cycling uh, back and forth between each other. So So night cycle, we're going to say start day cycle, and then day cycle, we're going to say start night cycle. Oops, sorry. Start coroutine. And actually, I made a mistake. Not a big one, but you need the parentheses in here. Okay. So, I enumerate a start night cycle, wait five seconds, change the intensity to zero, and then start the day cycle. Well, the day cycle says wait five seconds, set intensity back to one, and then go back to the night cycle. So, there, they trigger each other. Now, the only thing we don't have is this one getting triggered to begin with. So, in the start section, we'll say... Start coroutine, start night cycle. So basically what this will do is when the level initiates, start night cycle will be activated. And like I said, it'll go through these, which then activates this, which then activates that, and they'll just keep going back and forth. So let's see. So five seconds and then it should turn dark. Okay, now five more seconds and it should turn light. Five more, it should turn dark. And the five more, it should turn light. Now, obviously, two things. One, Day, night cycle should be much, much longer than that. It's going to be maybe 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever your game balance requires. Second of all, you don't want it to change immediately like that. Like we said, there needs to be a transition, which is easy, easy enough to do. The only time you'd want it to go out instantly like that is, say, maybe someone flicked a switch or something. So a bunch of ways to add the transition. The one I'm going to do is a little bit wordy, but it's very obvious what's happening. You can go back and try to make a simplified or more automated version. Basically, this is just to make it clear that there's a relationship between the passage of time and the intensity level variable. So right now, it's it's waiting five seconds and then immediately changing to the other time of day. Waiting five seconds and then immediately changing. We want there to be the five seconds because that's the duration of that time of day and then transition to the other time of day. So this is going to be a little bit wordy, but again, you can go back and make it more automated you want. Game like this, it is not resource intensive, so it's not a problem. So rather than immediately going to zero, what we're going to do, and instead we're going to go to... 0.8, and we'll wait, say, half a second, and we need a letter F in there. So we still have the full amount of time for the cycle. Actually, we'll have to increase it because of this. Change it to 0.8 rather than 0. Wait half a second. Change it to 0.6. And now it's just copy and paste, rinse and repeat. Wait half a second, change it to 0.4. Wait half a second, change it to 0.2. Wait half a second and change it to zero. And then it starts the day cycle. Well, now that our transition is a full two seconds long, where it was zero before, to keep it the same, we'd really need to bump this up to seven. And now we just take this, come down here, just copy and paste. Now you just reverse it. 
because you're starting at 0, you go up to 0 0.2, up to 0 0.4, up to 0 0.6, up to 0 0.8, and then 1.0, and you don't have to change the time because you're keeping it the same amount. So now what's going to happen is it waits 7 seconds rather than 5, and then it transitions. Like I said, there's probably an automated way to do this. I just want to make it very clear about the correlation between passage of time and changing of that variable. And Sorry, I forgot the letter F after these. It's a float. I'm using a decimal. Error should go away. Yep. So it should wait seven seconds. Now, because the change is so substantial, it's 0.2, you really see the transition. But that would be sufficient for, say, like um, earlier RPGs and things like that, where you have a quick day night cycle. But you can just expand this as much as you want. You could maybe, say, make this uh, a 0.1 difference rather than 0.2, or even make it 0 0.05. So again, using this method, it's going to be kind of wordy, but it also is very obvious what you're doing. So I think that should do it. That handles the day-night transition. So now there is a material to the 2D objects. They can now get brighter and darker. And there is now a day-night cycle, although very short day-night cycle, but at least it's there and it gets you one step closer to having a game like this. Again, it's just a matter of how quickly do you want it to change? How long do you want the day cycle to last, the night cycle to last? I suppose if you're looking at seasons, they would not necessarily be the same because maybe you're in the summer and so you have a 14-hour day and a 10-hour night or something like that, or maybe a 15- or 16-hour day. So, or I suppose if you're in Alaska, then you could even have a 24-hour day. So that should about do it. Um, I think that should take care of the day-night cycle, and again, it's just tweaking it to however long you want it to be. So that should do it.